Hello, everyone. I am Sinan from University of Toronto, and today I'm going to talk about our work, Immortal Threads, Multi-Threaded Event-Driven Intermittent Computing on Ultra-Low Power Microcontrollers. First, I would like to start by talking about what intermittent computing systems are. Emerging energy harvesting devices can operate without batteries by harvesting energy from ambient energy sources. As depicted in the slide, the typical components of a batteryless device are an energy harvester, a capacitor as an energy buffer to store the harvested energy, an ultra-low power microcontroller that controls sensing, computation, and communication, and other components such as sensors and radio chips. The microcontroller has a fast non-volatile memory that is used to capture the volatile program state. A batteryless device can compute, sense, and communicate when the energy stored in its capacitor is above an operating threshold. It turns off and loses its volatile state, such as the contents of the CPU registers, when the energy level drops below this threshold. The device can turn on only after charging its capacitor again. Power failures during such type of execution hinder the forward progress of the computation, which means the computation starts from the beginning and the intermediate volatile results are lost at each reboot. Moreover, power failures may cause data stored in non-volatile memory to be partially updated, which leads to memory inconsistencies. Now, I would like to move on to the state of the art on intermittent computing. During intermittent execution, batteryless devices need to save their computation state in non-volatile memory when power failure is imminent. This backup enables forward progress by allowing recovery after a power failure. The computational state includes registers, volatile, and persistent variables. The prior art proposed mainly two approaches for backup and recovery. The first one is to place checkpoints in program source, which store their continuation in non-volatile memory. After a power failure, control resumes from the latest successful checkpoint location. Another approach is to employ a task-based programming model, which requires programmers to implement their programs as a collection of tasks and transitions among them. This model eliminates the cost of checkpoints since tasks have all or nothing semantics, that is, they are idempotent, which means that a function pointer to the current task is enough to represent the continuation of the program. Despite its efficiency, the task-based programming model poses significant problems in developing event-driven applications. The first problem is the event handling complexity. Implementing event-driven applications using the task-based model requires programmers to manage task partitioning and task-based control flow together with the management of the event states and transitions. This situation creates a, an, an excessive co cognitive burden. The second problem is the stackless concurrency offered by the task-based model. Since tasks execute atomically, they voluntarily yield the control and other tasks cannot preempt them. Moreover, tasks cannot block on events. On the other hand, stackful concurrency has programming expressiveness since continuations can be set anywhere in the thread's call stack by preserving the local variables. It enables blocking on events, trigger new threads of execution, and notify the completion of event processing, etc. However, it's very costly since each thread requires its own stack and thread preemption requires storing all registers into the continuation, including the stack. Therefore, intermittent computing does not support it as of now. The last issue is the partial execution of the tasks. Since tasks have all or nothing semantics, tasks lose their progress when a power failure happens, and this issue decreases the throughput and increases event response time. Considering the mentioned issues, now I would like to introduce our problem statement. We are seeking a programming model for the intermittent computing that has no cognitive load and, light, uh, and uh, that is lightweight as task-based model, that has flexibility of the stackful concurrency, including preemption and multi-threading, and that has minimal vested progress upon a power failure. In this work, we introduce immortal threads that brings pseudo-stackful preemptive multi-threaded programming model to intermittent computing and fulfills all these requirements. Now I am going to give you an overview of immortal threads. Programmers using immortal threads write their applications in a multi-threaded fashion as they are programming a continuously powered system. The main building blocks of an intermittent event-driven application are immortal threads that continue running from where they left upon power failures. 
The duties of the programmers are to identify the events in their system, to design the threads that are the event handlers, and to manage the state's trans transitions. It is worth mentioning that these steps are identical to the steps followed to develop event-driven applications in continuous powered systems. Therefore, programmers using immortal threads are oblivious to intermittent execution. They do not need checkpoints and tasks. Immortal threads support the common multi-threaded event-driven language constructs, such as blocking weight on events and event unblocking. The compiler frontend transforms the source code, which includes pseudo-stackable threads, into stackless continuations that handle intermittency without programmer intervention. The instrumented source files are linked with the immortal threads library to form the intermittently executable binary file. Now, I would like to talk about how we implemented immortal threads. We implemented immortal threads library mainly using C macros and preprocessor directives. The library also includes functions for system initialization and scheduling operations. We implemented the source to source transformation by using the LLVM and C lang lib tooling library and by using the C macros defined in immortal threads library. The compiler frontend takes the programmer source and processes it by inserting C macros defined in immortal, the immortal threads library. We will explain these macros shortly. Firstly, the compiler frontend instruments the function body or the thread body by wrapping it using begin and end macros. Then the compiler frontend instruments all local variables by using def macro followed by the data and data type and name. This is also the ordinary way of variable declaration in C language. This operation converts programmer defined local variables to persistent static variables with local scope. The compiler front end instruments variable manipulations using write and write self macros to ensure memory consistency. These macros manage write after read dependencies, perform checkpoints, and keep functions and threads idempotent. Write macro manipulates variables when the update operation does not include any write after read dependency. Write self manipulates variables when there is a write after read dependency. Thanks to source to source transformation that uses the C macros defined in immortal threads library, if a power failure interrupts the thread execution, the thread continues from the last checkpoint performed by the immortal threads runtime. The last checkpoint is always the last memory manipulation via write or write self macros. Now I would like to talk about micro continuations. Immortal threads save the continuation, which we call micro continuation, on each memory update. This guarantees the idempotence of the execution until the next checkpoint. Micro continuations are enabled by two innovations introduced by the Immortal Threads library. Almost three checkpoints that saves only the program counter rather than all registers and memory. Just two bytes are needed for checkpoints. And just-in-time privatization that creates private copies of variables dynamically to keep non multi memory consistent. That requires just eight bytes for versioning in our current implementation. To describe micro continuations, I'm going to show how the source file after the compiler pass looks like uh, uh, after C preprocessor. After C preprocessor, each immortal thread becomes a C function. It maintains a persistent variable, this, that comprises a program counter, PC, to enable microcontinuations. A privatization buffer is also maintained in non-volatile memory, which we will talk later. After the C preprocessor, the body of the immortal thread, which is wrapped with begin and end macros, becomes switch case structures in C. Moreover, all local variables are allocated in non-volatile memory with static storage duration, which makes immortal threads stackless. The immortal thread initially starts by executing its first case block, K0, since the PC field of the variable this is initialized with zero. The almost free checkpoint is just adding a new case statement at compile time and modifying the PC of the immortal thread. We implemented almost three checkpoints using the standard GNU C preprocessor macro counter, whose value incremented at each time the preprocessor encounters it. After these transformations, if the thread starts running and it fails due to a power failure, 
And when the thread restarts again, the execution will continue from the case statement of the last checkpoint. Almost three checkpoints are enabled by three macros. The first macro is the CP or checkpoint that implements checkpoints. We implemented the core checkpoint code as inserting a new case statement to the switch, switch case block that forms the thread body. The program counter field of this structure is also updated accordingly. The second macro is write, which performs single memory updates that do not lead, uh, lead to write after dependencies. Since a sequence of memory update operations form a write after read dependency, by inserting checkpoints between these assignments, write after the read dependencies are prevented and uh, memory consistencies are eliminated. Another issue occurs when the statements that uh, uh, when update statements include write after read dependencies. These statements require two phase commit to ensure memory consistency. Write set macro employs a two phase commit to update the persistent variables. This is enabled by just in time privatization. In the first phase, Immortal Trust library creates a private version of the variable in the privatization buffer and updates the private version. In the second phase, Immortal Trust library commits the private version to the original variable. Thanks to just-in-time privatization, Immortal Threads do not require a compiler analysis to de detect idempotent on blocks. Furthermore, there is no need for static versioning. Immortal Threads library forms a continuous sequence of idempotent code blocks by connecting them using almost free checkpoints on the fly. Immortal Threads library also implements a scheduler that switches the execution from the current thread to the next one. When the periodic timer of the scheduler fires, it interrupts the current thread. The scheduler switches to the next thread and starts running it. When the scheduler switches back to the first thread again, this thread continues execution from its latest checkpoint. Indeed, the scheduler interruption acts as an artificial power fader. For more information on compiler front-end implementation, function calls, scheduling, semaphores, and mutexes handling, you can check our paper. Now I would like to move on to the performance, of, uh, performance evaluation of immortal threads. We use an MSP evaluation board as a computation platform and PowerCast RF transmitter as a power source. We consider three state-of-the-art runtimes, Alpaca, Inc., and Tiggs. As benchmarks, we consider the common benchmarks in intermittent computing, which are bit count, cuckoo filter, and activity recognition. We also consider the deep neural network inference as benchmark, since it includes computationally intense operations. In the first set of experiments, we considered bit count, activity recognition, and cuckoo filter benchmarks. We generated a random power failure with a uniformly distributed firing period in the interval of 5 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds, and we observed that microcontinuations reduced wasted work and the throughput uh, most of the time compared to existing runtimes with immortal threads. Then we evaluated the NN inference. We used one microfarad capacitors as the energy storage and three different distances from the RF power uh, transmitter to observe different power failure patterns. Note that Alpaca and Inc. DNN implementations employ loop continuation to reduce vested work and improve throughput, which violates, violates the task-based model. We conclude that immortal press performance becomes superior to the other runtimes as the power failure rate increases. It wastes, wastes less computational progress thanks to the microcontinuations. All results show that the runtime overhead and benefits of immortal press depend on the application's memory access patterns and the frequency of the power faders. For more information and results, please, please see our paper. Now I would like to conclude my talk. In this study, we introduced immortal threads to intermittent computing that enables pseudo-stackable multi-threaded programming brings the missing event-driven primitives and removes the cognitive burden of intermittent computing. All these features come with a comparable overhead. We release Immortal Threads as an open source project for the community whose artifacts can be downloaded from our GitHub repository. This is the end of my talk. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them.